Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Jolene Jang. Many times we're going to gravitate to the people that we know and are like us. We're going to shy away from the people who are different and we can't relate to. I'm going to introduce you to a woman you have not met. And my wish for you is when you do meet her is that you can feel at ease and feel comfortable and that you will be accepting and understanding. Her name is Christine Patillo, and she has Dissociative Identity Disorder, DID, also known as Multi-Personalized Disorder, MPD. And the cause, the belief, the main cause of this is traumatic abuse. And she has had traumatic abuse. When she was a child, her father abused her both physically and mentally. And her neighbor was a pedophile and sexually abused her from seven to nine. What doctors believe is sometimes when there is so much abuse, what happens is the brain fractures and splits into different personalities as a coping mechanism in order to manage all that stress. For example, she has an altar, they're called altars, named She. And it is a 40-year-old lesbian who's tough, who's going to be able to manage and deflect all the abuse. All of them have different purposes. Let me introduce you to them so as we have the interview you'll you'll get to meet some of them and you can get an understanding um they're all female except for one uh, christine she's the host and what happens is they shift out um sharing the body essentially christine is 50 years old the um and then i mentioned the she is um 40 years old uh, we have Tristan, who is the soul male. He's very funny. He's 20 years old and uh, creative, and he's an artist. You have some kids. Chrissy is a six-year-old, and she's very vocal, very playful. And a two-year-old, Chrissy, who's very smart for her years. Since these altars have been there, um, most of them have been there from the very start. Um, and you'll hear more from her. But the two-year-old... Um, comes out here and there. Bobby, I... Happy Yay! birthday! Happy birthday. Happy mm. birthday. When is your birthday? Today is my birthday. Right after Christmas is Cindy's birthday. That is my birthday. Then we have Q. Q is a 30 year old and has a beading business. And we have Rim, who's a little bit more quiet and she's about 28 years old. So all of these personalities share Christine's body and they, they shift out and it's, it's very collaborative. We're going to have an opportunity to meet Chris, her husband as well. Christine is the author of I Am We and My Life with, Person My Life with Multi-Personalities. And this is a way for her to share um, what happens and to ask for acceptance and to also help all the people who have mental illness and particularly that have multi-personalities disorder. Let's meet Christine and her clan. Hello. Hello. So um, when I'm talking to you, Christine, are the rest listening? Like Tristan, do you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. So Tristan, while I'm talking to Christine, what are you doing? We have an internal home, mm -hmm. so I'm talking to the other altars that are inside. We can, we have our own rooms. We can see out Christine's eyes, but it's kind of like a, looking at a small TV. And if somebody out in an audience uh, coughs or sneezes and we're paying attention, we can hear that happening too, the noises that are going on outside and the noises that are going on inside. So let's say, um, so I'm talk. I'm addressing Christine, um, but Tristan, you want to say something. So how well, does that work? Well, if that works, it depends on the situation because we've worked uh, over, it's been over 20 years that we've been working uh, on our mental health and working with this situation. And we've come to a place that we're able to uh, function in a healthy manner as a family living openly with this condition and so now if Tristan wanted to say something he'd wait until I was done talking and then say okay I'm coming out and I'd hear that and, and he'd shift out or if it was in our our 
how we're eating dinner and it's kind of just a free-for-all they don't ask they just shipped out and make their little quips or their comments and then they shipped in and somebody else comes out and it's it's uh, a little bit crazier but it's uh, uh, fun and and it's just like being with a group of seven people there's just happens to be one body so in terms of like like this little interview or conversation um, is Q that's one of your altars mm -hmm. um, Q, are you there and are you are you show friendly or are there are there some altars that are a little bit less shy or well I'm here and this is Q and I am far from uh, shy but we have a one altar her name is Rim and she was one of the three that grew up with Christine living with uh, this condition and people would only see Christine and she tends not to uh, do too much on the talking and speaking out. But what she does do is it, when we're giving our presentations, she'll come out and talk because it's crucial for people growing up. Uh, the altars are a, a survival mechanism. And so Rim and another altar that's Hope, who's not with us anymore, they lived as Christine. And people only knew Christine and they sound very close together. The rest of us were existed internally and we didn't live much life externally until Christine went public about it. And when you meet us, you meet Tristan, you meet me, you meet Chrissy and Cindy, the youngest, we all sound different and it would be really obvious to say, well, how could someone not notice you guys sound so different? But the core people that grew up for many, many years as Christine uh, sound very similar. Okay, well that makes sense. Yeah, and I, I don't know if Rim is Rim. Do you would you come out? Hi, hi, Joey. I'm Rim. I'm Rim. Uh, and my purpose when we're giving our presentations really is just to to show that it'd be very easy. People didn't think they don't think about it now as much, but back then, uh, oh maybe my child has multiple personalities. It it never crossed anybody's mind to ask and so hope and i and christine all sounded enough that they just thought that we were oh. the dramatic child or had mood swings it was never thought of that maybe they have a multiple personalities it didn't it didn't come out but at least now people can hear my voice and see that when, when christine's out it it would be such a slight difference that people wouldn't Paying attention well, to I think, Graham, you're, you're very calm and very... So how did that play in terms of helping helping Christine and Cope? How, what was your role? What, or what was it and what is it, I guess? Yeah, my role originally, I think, was uh, Christine's courage. And I wasn't always a help. Uh, just because an altar uh, fractures off for survival, you're not always helpful. Uh, I... I would put Christine in, in positions where she'd be terrified uh, just to do it because I could and it was kind of mean. But I really, her role was, my role was to be courageous. As she got older, I was her sexuality. Uh, alter Hope, who has integrated, she's not mm -hmm. with us anymore. Can you explain what integrated, um, what that means? Sure. Uh, integrating <clears throat> is a term used now this is a very non-scientific version of of the definition which is exactly what we want so <laughs> but, uh, it would mean that we have an altar and we had altar hope and she was with us all our lives and christine reached and she was kind of christine's internal guardian uh, caregiver uh, guardian angel so to speak and once Christine established her relationship with Christopher and the years in counseling and kind of had a support group that got built, uh, Hope's purpose of caring for her kind of served its purpose. Okay. And and we uh, she ended up it was, uh, integrating, and that process is different depending on the situation. For us, for Hope, it was that she just got real sick and weak, and she just digressed in in the ability for us to see her and her ability to move and function. And then it took about a month and then she just wasn't with us anymore. And it was a very traumatic emotional experience, but uh, that's integrating. And uh, for other people and other altars, it, it can be as simple as 
one day they're there and the next day they're not. That there's no mm. rhyme or reason to why. I think the more involved the person is in your world, uh, maybe the more drawn out it is for them to, to leave. I don't know, that's just my assumption. Mm. Um, well, in terms of making the transition to come out and be public and to let the altars have a voice externally, what was that decision? How was that inspired? And also, was it collaborative? And, you know, who made the decision or what were the discussions like? Well, this is still RAM out. Uh, I'll be glad to, to let anybody else come out at any moment. And, and, <laughs> <laughs> You're doing great. You're doing great. <laughs> and until then, uh, it was it was certainly collaborative. I, you know, a lot of my stuff is 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 laid out uh, wide openly in in the book. And if I didn't think that it was it was only that I knew if it could just impact one person and maybe change their life, somebody that's that's hiding and and not sharing what they're going through in their reality then it would make a difference and my conscious couldn't let it be that we wouldn't do that that we wouldn't talk and that we wouldn't share my participation has been limited publicly because I'm just not that person uh, comfort being out but I gave my approval to write the book and to participate knowing that there may be times where I say no, thank you. I'll I'll pass, and and that we respect that, and that's the case for all of us. If there's times where we don't want to uh, be out or to talk for an event, we have that right to say no, and we feel safe about that. That it'll be supported within our family with Christine, and that goes also for Christopher. If any of them feel that that they need uh, to step one out, then we allow that, and that's the book was. The book started out, Christine, why don't you come out and finish talking, please? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad I got stuck to talk to you. So, bye for that. <laughs> Thank you. Chris. Hi. 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 Uh, as far as the, the book, it originally was an ode to hope when she started okay. fading. Okay. Uh, fading being that she was, looks like she was integrating and, mm -hmm. and we were going to lose her. And I just thought I can't imagine... I can't, I just can't imagine that people will not know her or hear her voice or, or know her. And as I got, it was more cathartic. And as I got writing that, then it was like, we need to, to give everybody a chance to, to have their voices heard. So it's more, sorry to interrupt. Please. But so it was, it's more of a, a tribute and mm -hmm. honor and then, hey, let's make it more equal so everybody has a chance to. Right. Their story. And then if, if anybody out there, and Christopher, I mean, Christopher <clears throat> is so uh, significant in in our life. I mean, we've been together for 27 years. We were married 18 years before uh, I ever came out about the condition. And, and so that all of it is shared in all sides and some family and friends in the book. And it gives people a good core of, of our life. But then... But then it also has now taken on just this larger uh, experience of people contacting us that know somebody, that are living with it themselves. They think maybe a family member is dealing with something like this and thanking us for, for stepping up and, and bringing it to light. I don't, I'm not sure there was a point. I don't know the quote and we have it in our book, mm -hmm. but somebody stated that uh, there's a lot of misdiagnosis that go on for people with multiple personalities, which the appropriate term is dissociative identity disorder, that uh, it's a case of hiddenness because people don't talk about it and they don't want to share. And what we want is for it to no longer be hidden. Yeah. It doesn't need to be hidden and, and it's not not everybody is in a place where we are now where we can live so healthily and mm -hmm. openly as a person and they're still in a, a real struggling and painful part of their journey but they don't need to do it by themselves and there's there's help and there's people and and we're hoping that by talking about it and and bringing it to light that it will no longer be this closet condition that has to be hidden 
Yes, me too. <laughs> I, you know, I've talked. I've talked to so many different people about this because. Um, I met Christine at the National Speakers Association and was just delighted and also fascinated because she's different than me and I'm interested in people who are different than me. And um, I've talked to a lot of people and um, there's a lot of, a lot of different perspectives and um, I would like to help shed some light on it. So thanks for sharing. You're welcome.